Hi, I'm Alex. This is Pucks and Paperbacks, and today I have my June wrap-up. During the month of June, I read eight books, so I will be talking about them in this video and letting you know all of my thoughts. If you're new to my channel and my wrap-ups, I stopped giving star ratings last year, so you will not see me giving a star rating to books in any of my videos, including this one. I will just be reviewing them. But before we get into the books, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Bookshop.org. As you may know, I use Bookshop shop for a lot of my pre-orders and most of my book shopping needs. So naturally, I was so stoked when they reached out. So with Prime Day coming up, I want to tell you about their anti-Prime Day sale. This is happening from July 11th to July 12th, and you will get free standard shipping on all orders. And for all orders over $100, you can receive a gift tote bag. If you want an idea of some books you can buy during the sale, let's go to Past Alex when he was buying the books. Here is my final card. Page Boy, a memoir by Elliot Page. Lose You to Find Me by Eric J. Brown. I love a good foodie romance and I've seen this recommended. Fake Dates and Mooncakes by Shirley. I've seen everywhere and have been dying to get it. Several People Are Typing by Calvin Kuzluke. I want to read this so badly and it's written by a trans author. And last, I have As You Walk On By by Julian Winters. What I love about bookshop.org is you're not only supporting your favorite local bookstores with every purchase, but bookshop.org offers the convenience of online shopping with the personal impact of shopping locally. Readers can simply select an order from any bookstore they want to support. Each order is fulfilled and shipped directly to you by bookshop.org with the full profit from your purchase sent directly to the bookstore. When I use bookshop.org, it allows me to support local businesses like online Uncle Bobby's Coffee and Books. I use them every time I order from bookshop.org. They are a Philadelphia Black-owned business, and I love that I get to support them with bookshop.org. One of my most frequently asked questions is where do I buy books and where can you buy books? And the answer I always give is bookshop.org. Personally, I don't have many bookstores near me. The closest one is 30 minutes away. And with bookshop.org, I'm able to support any bookstore I want, especially my favorite local bookstores that are all the way in the city. And they give 80% of their profit margin to independent bookstores. To date, bookshop.org has generated $26 million for independent bookstores. Amazon continues to dominate sales, threatening the futures of beloved bookstops around the world. One of my favorite bookstores in the city was recently shut down and that was devastating stating news to me, but with bookshop.org, they are providing businesses the opportunity to make a viable income. Amazon sells over 60% of all books and is growing. That shift threatens the future for us readers, the publishers, and the authors, especially those who rely on a diverse, healthy ecosystem for books. It's vital to the culture of books to support these stores during the age of global e-commerce giants. If you would like to know more about why it is so important to support independent bookstores, I'm going to leave in my description bookshop.org's Instagram post where they lay out a hundred reasons to support bookstores. You can click the link in my description to bookshop.org and participate in the anti-Prime Day sale. If you click my links when I have them, it really helps support my channel. So thank you so much if you do and let me know what you buy for the anti-Prime Day sale. I really want to know. Now back to the books. In case you missed it, at the beginning of the month, I read two of Elliot Page's book recommendations and I turned it into a video. The first book I read was Amateur by Thomas Page McBee. He is a trans man and he is the first ever trans man to box at Madison Square Garden. This talks about how trans men experience masculinity and I just thought this was so incredible. I loved this so much that someone commented on my video saying they weren't even finished yet but they had bought a copy of Amateur in the middle of the video because I loved it so much and talked so highly about it. So that just says everything. I just wish that there were more books like this. I am going to need more because I said in my video it just felt like a trans older brother 
talking to me. I really wish I had this book when I had first come out because I was such an angry person and this was so cathartic to read. It was so amazing and I really loved how it talks about being a trans man and how your passing and being stealth and masculinity. I just loved this so, so much. This was just so amazing and I cannot wait to read more of the author's work. And then I read Punch Me Up to the Gods by Brian Broom and I compared this to the book All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. It's very similar and I actually read a few nonfiction this month that were in this kind of style. And so basically this is essays and stories of his life and him coming out as a gay man, but also the way that black culture views masculinity. And I love the way this was written. I read it via audiobook, but I also had the physical copy from the library. And this was so interesting because you are reading about his life and childhood and how he was forced to push his femininity in the closet and how abusive it was in his life from his father. And he just had to be a man. And there is a comparison in the book where he sees a younger black boy and he's viewing him and kind of having an experience where he's looking in the mirror and being like, this is what I wish we could do better for the younger generation. And it was just so interesting. I am obsessed with reading books about masculinity now after doing that video because I feel like I needed them for such a long time and I'm so glad they exist. Next, I read the first book in the House on Sunrise Lagoon series by Nicole Mellaby. This is Sam Makes a Splash and it was so good. I just love Nicole Mellaby. She is so awesome and I love the way that she writes middle grade and the family dynamic. She's really great at incorporating family in a positive way. What I loved is there are so many times where the kids just make a lot of mistakes because they're children. This book is about Sam who is adopted into the Ali O'Connor family and she's trying to find her place in this family. This is about a blended family. We have a foster kid, we have an adoptee, and you just have a lot of family shenanigans. Her mom is a boat captain and by overhearing a conversation, Sam hears that mom is going to sell her boat, the princess. And Sam immediately wants to save this and she wants this to be her mission and why they like her and why she's going to be the favorite kid. I just love the way that this was developed and how the parents do punish their kids for what they did, but it's nothing where their feelings aren't validated. It's just like, hey, we shouldn't do this. And here's why. The last book I read by Nicole Mellaby, aside from Cam Quiltbag, was The Science of Being Angry. And I really liked the family dynamics there. And all of her books with family involved shows that the kid is not the problem. They are just learning right from wrong. They think that they're helping the family, but instead, it's stressing the parents out more, but the kids are never the problem. They're just learning that they shouldn't do these things and it's gonna be okay. And I think there's like a line where one of the moms says, you don't have to fix everything. You're the kid. We're the adults. We will make the decisions. And I just loved this so much because you have so many sibling rivalries and problems and it is just dysfunction in a family, but it's a queer family and I just loved the development. This was so awesome and I am in the middle of the second book, Marina in the Middle, which follows the anxious kid and she is so relatable, so I can't wait to read the rest of that one. Next, I read Junior High by Tegan and Sarah with illustrations by Tilly Walden and this is their debut graphic novel. It's going to be a series and it is a fictionalized version of their middle school experience but kind of not because it's fictionalized and modernized and I get it, but I don't get it. Uh, here's some positives first is that I did like it. I thought that it was good for a middle grade graphic novel. It has a lot of odes to like Stranger Things. Someone is playing a Nintendo Switch and that's how I was like, wait, what year are we in? Like, 
Tegan and Sarah, I believe, were born in the 90s. And so I'm like, why are we not in the 90s? Like, I'm so confused. I understand for marketing purposes why they did that. But still, I'm annoyed because I'm like, well, now I have to read their actual memoir to find out what the actual story was because I don't really know much about them. Like, I've heard their music before. I know that they are twins, they're queer. So basically, this is following their first year of middle school, their parents divorce, and they are separated as twins. And so both are trying to just find out what they want in life, and it's a coming of age. And so you have some sexuality exploration and awakening, and then you have just the typical middle school experiences where you're trying to make friends, there's drama, and then you're also still trying to keep in touch with your old friend and it's pretty relatable. I think that it will bring you back to junior high, but you'll be glad that you're not in junior high in the year 2023. But I still wish that it wasn't all fictionalized. Now the author's note says that they did include some real life things in this book, but they took out some things that I think could have just been kept. Just a minor spoiler here, but they did change the scene about how they first were introduced to music. And don't get me wrong, I really loved the pages for that. I think that the illustrations were awesome because I love Hilly Walden, but those were some of my favorites where they are just one with the music and it was really cool to see. But I just don't understand why you needed to change that scene particularly because like what they say in the author's note is, oh, we didn't know until we were 15 that we liked music and like that's how we found a guitar. It's not actually what happened in the book. Even though the ages are off, you could still include that. So I'm just sitting here like, oh, I just need to read their memoir to know more about their actual story. So I feel like this was just kind of a cash grab maybe. Now, I would still recommend it if you just want to read like a junior high graphic novel about some kids that are learning about their sexuality and just trying to get through middle school. I think that it was still a good story for that, but if you're going into this wanting to know more about Tegan and Sarah, it's not going to really tell you that. But if you like Tilly Walden, I still recommend it. I just want to tell you up front that it's not going to tell you everything about Tegan and Sarah. So I'm definitely going to read their memoir and I'll get back to you. Next for the Queer Lit Readathon and the Queer Disabled Bingo, I'll have all of the links down below for both of those. The Disabled Book Bingo is still going on since July is Disability Pride Month. And so I read The Queer Principles of Kit Webb by Kat Sebastian, and this was so fun. This is a historical fiction, Grumpy Sunshine, following two gay men, Percy and Kit, Kit is very grumpy and Percy is a thief. <laughs> he is so hilarious. Like I was laughing out loud at this book. It was so funny. Sometimes you read romance that is just hilarious and silly and it doesn't mean much. That is what this was for me. Now, I'm not saying that the story was bad or anything. Honestly, I think it was just like myself reading it is that I kind of got confused between both characters sometimes because I had to keep reminding myself like, no, Percy does this, Kit does this. And then I had to keep like reading the description to remember. So that might've just been me or it's just that the book is a little bit chaotic and I was just trying to figure everything out. But honestly, this was such a fun romance. Another thing is that Kit is bisexual and he's known he was bisexual, but this is his first time with a man. That was a really unique perspective that I don't read a lot, so I really appreciated having that as well. And I want to point out the disability rep. We have Kit who was recently injured and he now has a mobility aid and chronic pain. And I loved the progression of his character. Like he's one of my favorite characters now. And I loved it because it talks about his internalized ableism and his character development was so good. I really loved it because at the beginning, he thinks he can do everything and he's like, oh, it's fine. Like I can, I can do everything. But as the book goes on, he's like learning, no, I'm disabled. I can't do 
everything and I do need help. And I thought that that was so awesome. Like he was such a fun character. I cannot wait to read more of the author's work. I have added a lot of their work to my one to read list on the story graphs. I'm definitely gonna keep reading this author. And so for the Queer Lit Readathon, I read it for the historical space, the host rec, because Kathy did recommend this in one of her A to Z of Queer Lits. And I think that's it. I think that's all it was. If not, I'll just put it up on the screen. But thank you, Kathy, because this was a really good recommendation. Next for non-binary author and group book, I read Finna by Nino Sipri. And this was really fun. It was a short book and this is like a sci-fi book about two people who work at this Ikea type place and they find a portal. There's just a lot of shit that goes on, but it's following two characters who recently broke up. And I love having two characters that are just not liking each other at the moment. I love a good enemies to lovers, but I also love a good forced proximity where you are forcing these two characters to just be in a space with each other where they're just trapped into this portal and they have to basically make up or just like talk to each other. And I think this was such a great way to get closure. I commend the author for adding that into the book. I think that that was the best way that this book could have gone. And I really liked having that character dynamic because you're learning about their breakup and their characters and just who they are and what their relationship was to each other. And the ending was so great. I really love this. Like this is so good from a writer's standpoint. I just love when writers like flip a story on its head because it could just be like these co-workers who don't really know each other and they're just like in this portal and they're trying to like figure out what happened. But I think also it like talks all about work and how you can be trapped in a space and the female protagonist, she's realizing her worth and that like this job doesn't mean everything to her. And it was really great. So I'm so glad I finally read it. For trans joy and folklore, I read my novella of Cinderella by S.T. Lynn. I got that during a Stuff Your Kindle day once and I thought it was good. This is following Cinderella as a black trans woman. And I really loved the trans joy in this book. If you're familiar with the story of Cinderella, she is being emotionally abused by her stepmother and sisters and her self-worth is on the ground. And she's also grieving her father in this particular story. And so I was like, does this have trans joy? And you know, not every book has to have a character who is trans that is experiencing joy all the time. I honestly feel like this was so realistic because she is going through hell and she does experience some trans joy. And I feel like this was so relatable because there are so many trans people that don't get a lot of trans joy in their life, but we are allowed to get it even if we're not in the most accepting environment. There's a scene where she's in the women's bathroom. She's trying to fix her makeup because her sisters destroyed it. And she is approached by another woman and it can be so scary to be a trans person in the bathroom. And so she's already super nervous about that. And this woman comes in and she asks her her opinion on makeup and is like, oh, do you think that this makeup looks good on me? Like, what should I do? And she feels so amazing because she's like, this person sees me as a woman. And that is such a euphoric moment for any trans person. And so that is why this is for trans joy because just because we aren't having the best time and we aren't just automatically accepted and everything is great. Trans people are still able to get little ounces of trans joy like that. So I really appreciated the author adding that. And then you do get a happily ever after and it was really good. So I recommend it if you picked it up during the recent Stuff Your Kindle sale. It was cute and I enjoyed it. I feel like I enjoyed it more because it had that, but I have been wanting a lot of Cinderella stories from 
the perspective of a trans person, so I'm so glad that we have this one. And the last book I read in June was Hola Poppy, How to Come Out in a Walmart Parking Lot, and Other Life Lessons by John Paul Brommer. This is about John Paul, who is a biracial Mexican-American gay man. This was such a cool way to write a memoir. He's a columnist, and so it's his column, Hola Poppy, and he's being asked questions from like everyday people or queer people, and each question you learn a little bit about his life. So he associates a story from his life with this question, and it was so cool. I really enjoyed it. I especially liked the one story where he talks about how he came out later in life and felt like there was so much time that passed and talks about being a queer person and grieving the life you could have had and just the childhood you could have had. And that is a lot of the book, but it also just talks about his mental health and how he came to realize his sexuality, but it's not even just about his sexuality, it's really just about his life and a lot of his life stories. And so I want to give a big trigger warning for a lot of mentions of suicide or suicidal thoughts. Definitely know that going into this book. That was a really good one. And so that is everything I read for Pride Month 2023. Let me know what you read. And again, thank you so much to bookshop.org for sponsoring today's video. If you are going to participate in the anti-Prime Day sale, let me know in the comments what you're going to buy and if you're gonna buy anything that I also bought. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, feel free to hit subscribe and giving this video a thumbs up really helps on my channel. So thanks if you do. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.